It's pretty. I think someone was watching out of a window back there. It's you. That was just a curtain blowing. Are we ready to go on? I'll tell you a cup. Just a minute. Careful. 
In one minute, this whole area is going to be swarming with SID men. You got that? Yeah. Fowler, you and I better get going. Betty, you and Barry stay by the radio and monitor the SID. If we need anything, I'll call you. Right down. Break it up. Let's go. Come on. Captain Ray reporting to headquarters. It's all secure here. I'm coming in. Uh, the special officer was dead when the ambulance got here. A broken neck. An inspector. Impossible as it may seem. It must have been the little people. Well, it's the only thing that makes any sense. They were last reported in the neighborhood, at least three of them. Now, the shop they hit was a drugstore. Yeah, they must have been after some medicine. Yeah, right. Steve wasn't planning on going to any drugstore, was he? Mm -mm. You wouldn't even think of killing him.
ahead, Steve. You can't be far away. The signal's coming in real strong. Well, our man took the long way around, but he finally, finally has gone into a building. Well, how do we find you? We're still at the same place you told us to come. Well, if you go due west, exactly three blocks, you'll come to a, well, to an old building. You can't miss it. Right. Uh, Steve, there was a dead man lying here when we arrived. What happened? I'll fill you in when you get here. Right. Let's go. little man. I can't believe it. That is not the same man. It's the same man. He should be dead by now. Zaro! Save him! A remarkable robot, Professor. I prefer to call him the hydraulic man. Where do you control him from? The command board is in the workroom in the corner. Both of you, you're, uh, you're Earth scientist, aren't you? Don't know the first thing about it. You? Yes, I am. Well, I was right in bringing you here. I've read about you little people. Your technology is way ahead of us, and I need help. Well, you won't get it from me, Professor. Why not? Because your invention's a deadly one. It's too dangerous to even exist. It wasn't meant to be dangerous. It was meant to be beneficial. After what we saw earlier tonight, you can't be serious. What happened tonight wasn't meant to happen. It was a complete malfunction. You helped me find the problem, and I guarantee you the gratitude of our government. Now, we've had ample proof of your government's gratitude. You can trust me. Not even the slightest chance I get us out of here. All right, but I may be of no help at all. But you are willing to try. I'm sorry about the cage, but it's necessary. Come on, you must trust him. It's the only chance we've got. Professor Reichelt Born, Belk Institute, working on a grant from the state. And you? 
Mark Wilson, Caltech and MIT, designer and consultant in space technology. Any other Earthling? Alexander Fitzhugh. If he's not a scientist, what does he do? What the rest of us do, he fights for survival. weapon we're supposed to have. The, the, oh, no, that's, that's the giants. It's not us. Well, what kind of weapon is it? Well, it is a giant. It's the largest one you ever saw, and it shakes up bullets like they're flea bites. I'll tell you all about it. Let's get started first. Mr. Wilson, this is Mr. Zorro. He's going to help us. My assistant was at the controls when the malfunction took place. Did you receive any feedback from the robot to the board? Yes. I'm amazed you would have guessed that lights indicated that hydraulic systems I hadn't programmed for use had been activated. I'd like to take a look at the schematic plans for the robot's receiving system. Sure. See anything wrong, Professor? Well, there is something wrong. The hydraulic man is designed to obey orders without fail. He doesn't, he goes crazy. Something within the robot caused it. The only comparison I can think of offhand is the effect of the adrenaline gland on the human being. I know nothing about glands, I only know about mechanics. Well, haven't you ever watched a cornered rat? Great fear or anger creates an abnormal strength or ferocity. The hydraulic man doesn't know fear or anger. He knows nothing. Perhaps we're wrong in the Earthling's right. Well, we'll see about that. Look, it's only a comparison. It means nothing. like a plaster inner wall, Steve. Right. Mm -hmm. Not to make things easy. Professor? There's nothing keeping you in there except the trap door. You think I didn't find that out? I put the budget more than an inch or two. Well, maybe you didn't have the proper stimulus. Professor! I want to know what you're going to do. I'm not sure you're right. Then tell me. You Earth people are far ahead of us technically. You're also untrustworthy and deceitful. I want to see if you're playing a trick on me. Look, I offered nothing more than a basic scientific theory. It could be completely wrong. We'll find out. Don't move a muscle, it's your only chance. <laughs> 
Darrell, make him move. in his cage and come in the workroom. I want to examine the little man. happens, you get out there fast. Back to normal. You'll be all right, Fitzy. But no thanks to you. I excuse myself on the grounds of research. What about the uh, blood analysis? Yes, the uh, little man's blood contains an abnormal amount of glucose. How does that fit in with your adrenaline theory, Wilson? Perfectly. The adrenal gland caused the liver to inject glucose into his bloodstream. <laughs> Good heavens. How much blood did you take from me? Relax, you've lost more blood when you cut yourself shaving. We haven't got time for you, man. Now, check your adrenaline theory. What now? How would I know? You've learned something, but you solved nothing. Why? Because your mechanical man is not a human being. Who knows what his potential adrenal gland might be? It didn't appear in the plans I looked at. Well, I've got more detailed plans in my office. Would they help any? Possibly. Frankly, I don't know at this point. We'll sit you back in the holding cage. Join me in the office. Yes, Professor. Well, I'm sure I saw Mark in that cage. What's going on back there in the office? Right. Be careful.
see him. Is he hurt? Apparently not. He's trying to force his way out of the cage. Take a look. That's ID, Officer Professor. He's coming in here. Get rid of him as fast as we can. We got a lot of work to do tonight. <laughs> One of my men, he's resting while we work out a problem here. He's certainly a big man. Anything in particular you want? Oh, just to tell you that there's an all-point search out for the little people, sir. But they're extremely dangerous. We're warning everyone that if they see them, they're not to attempt to capture them. Just notify the authorities and we'll take care of them. I don't think they'd bother the laboratory. Well, it's pretty well isolated out here. It'd be the place they'd pick. You're right, you're right. Thanks for the warning. We really better drag that out. So far, look, Betty, under any circumstances, I don't want you to leave the ship. Well, we've been monitoring the SID. Where are you? I'll tell you later. Just, just hold tight now. You want to look at some more of these? They're of no use. Neither are you, unless we turn you in for the reward. The SID is still outside, you know. Now, take it easy, Professor. I'm not refusing to help. All right, just say something helpful. Oh, look, if there's some way you can secure the robot so it won't do any damage, we could duplicate the command sequence Zorro used when the robot malfunctioned. That might give us the clue we need. Well, the mechanical man's chair is bolted to the floor. And... Zorro, could you change the chair and still give him room to maneuver? Yes, sir. Do it and get the command panel ready. Right away, sir. Well, you want to observe this. As closely as possible. Well, the command sequence isn't too complicated. It was complicated enough to cause a man's death and gut a drugstore. <laughs> Come a few steps forward, then start the sequence. Thank you. 
See what's happening, Mark. The little man isn't hurt seriously, Professor. He should be coming around any moment. Watching you, you were trying to open this door in the cage. Can't you open it? It can't be opened. With some help. Please get me out of here. Uh, not yet. There's no one in the building. But just hang tight. We'll be back. How much of the test did you observe? The whole thing until. I'm surprised you're still here. There's a glancing blow, otherwise I wouldn't be. What's your analysis? Well, the trouble seems to be with the more intricate and delicate mechanisms. The forearms, the wrists, the fingers. Did you get the same jumbled feedback at the control panel? Exactly. You solved this problem for us. I promise you, our scientific department will do everything they can to help you get back to Earth. Well, that's very generous, Professor. Don't forget the if. You have to repair the hydraulic man. I well, have to get right into the inner works of the robot itself. It's easy. It's on the chassis, just above the power panel. Get the hydraulic man ready. All right. We'd better stay nice and loose for a while. Why? Because that bucket of bolts over there could be our passport back to Earth. If Mark can fix it so it doesn't keep blowing its cool, we'll be going home soon. <laughs> I need some light in here, Professor.
much power do the batteries push up here? Enough to light a small town. I want Zorro to do some things at the control panel. Exactly the things I asked for. Hey, Professor. I'd nod his head and then turn it. Activate the right hand slowly, and then faster. The same procedure with the left arm and hand, please. Same thing with the left arm and hand. Leakage causes a false electrical field. Wilson's found a problem. He needs rubberized tape. I need at least a half dozen pieces, maybe more. Something that can fully prove its infallibility. Well, why not just repeat the other test? This one's going to be too demanding. Get him ready for the test, Zorro. Stand up. Go to the cage. Pick up the fish you with me. But handle him gently. You can't do that. What's the matter, little man? Don't you trust your workmanship? Mark's too much. Give him some tools and they'll fix anything. back in the cage.
turn it to its chair and join me in the office. Secretary of War, Mac, please. This is Professor Gordon. Oh, that's all right, I'll do it. Secretary Mac, Professor Gordon. I've got a surprise for you. It's finished? The hydraulic man is finished. I'm ready for a demonstration before the entire Supreme Council. You're sure, Professor? Without qualifications, sir. Professor, I'm preparing for a meeting with the council in the morning. Meanwhile, I must witness a demonstration of your creature before I meet with the cabinets. All right, sir, I'll see you before dawn. You didn't mention our captives, Professor. Oh, Zorro, we need them now more than ever. The secretary wants to get a price on a second hydraulic man. You better check supplies, see if we've got enough parts to make them. Right away, sir. Steve, that's the way we came in. We can't work our way out any other place. <laughs> the P.I. factor. You know, that psychological impact might be made to work both ways. On the professor and the secretary, as well as their enemies. Oh. Trying to be tough may be impossible. I need some time in that workroom undisturbed. I need help from both you and Dan, if possible, Steve. Yeah, but what happens when Gorn comes out of his office or the other one is finished there in the storeroom? Mark, if you could make that time, do you think there's a chance? That's the only chance we've got. I think I can do it. I've got an idea. But I need Valerie's assistance. She'll help. Let's get this door open. Here's an inventory of the parts, Professor. Thanks. You mean drains? You insufferable intellectual snobs! How dare you to abandon and leave me like this? You regretted Burton, C Captain Burton. I will see that you every evil deed is disclosed. Not only you, Captain Burton, but all the rest of your foul followers. What happened? Where's Mark Wilson? Can't you see? He's gone. His friends, his friends came and took him away. Because I'm not wise in the ways of science and espionage and murder. I'm left behind like this. It's impossible. There's no way into the building. For them, <laughs> their way is in and out. There is no room in their hearts. You don't believe me? They left another behind. Where? Over there someplace. Pleaded for my life, so they abandoned her. Her name is Valerie. There she is. I saw her. She's behind this cabinet, Professor. She's gone. There she goes. Bring the little man. Might be a trick. Put 
them on a tabletop and start in that corner over there. I assure you, sir, I could have sworn it, Professor. I even show you saw in the laboratory. Yes, sir. And I put the plans back in the box and what question fits you. Professor. We have them. You may be willing to talk, but I never will. One in form, it'll be enough. Go ahead, Fitzhugh. I believe I noticed some of the spiritus fermenti on the sideboard yonder. A small dollop would do wonders for my memory. So I'll bring him some whiskey. Oh, yeah, and a pad and pencil. We're going to take down everything you say, and you're going to sign it. With the greatest of pleasure. Sir, what was your most recent unexplained disaster? Let's see, the, uh, the destruction of the munitions dump right near the airport. Said to be done by the underground. They call themselves Forces for Freedom. You couldn't be more wrong. The person responsible is one of the little people. A woman known only as Betty. Truly the devil's handmaiden. She directs all the activities of the little people? By no means. <laughs> but she's the most ruthless of them all. <laughs> this man, Dan, if, if he committed all the crimes you give him credit for, why didn't they execute him on Earth? Couldn't catch him, that's why. Couldn't catch him. A regular wind of the whips. Wisp, that is. <laughs> so. <laughs> now you see him, now you don't. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Quiet! You haven't identified the leader yet. The leader? That would be the great Captain Burton. That's who it has to be. Burton. <laughs> I shudder when I think of him. Well, the hiding place. Where's the hiding place? Hmm. Hiding place. Who's got the hiding place? <laughs> the hiding place. <laughs> Miss Valerie, where's the hiding place? Hiding place. That should do it. Looks great. Let's hope it works. It better. Why do you please? Why do you please? Oh, 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 who's got the hiding? Dead drunk. Put her back on the holding cage. We're gonna get ready for the secretary. Thank you.
great performance. Thank you, my dear. It was a performance. <laughs> I'm afraid I overacted just a teensy weensy bit. Well, I'm as ready as we're ever going to be. What kind of demonstration do you think Gordon's going to make? Probably the simple ones first, and then he'll have him work out on the gymnastic equipment. If he ever gets that far, it's going to be a fine way to get our heads bashed in. <laughs> You're right. Well, are we going to do... He's completely mechanical. It's hard to believe, Professor. There's nothing to be afraid of, Mr. Secretary. My associate controls him from the other room. Shall we join him? Two of the little people. What are they doing here? They're captives of the hydraulic man. Remarkable. switch back there so it receives on my way in. Unbelievable, Professor. The turn of his friends, though. Mark! So look. That looks loose. Maybe. It was destruction, I hope. Signal's not strong enough to reach.
Anything interesting in the flames? Poor Robert, you know, I feel sorry for him. I shouldn't have told you what happened. You could have used your time to better advantage. I don't feel sorry for him. Not him, it. He's a monster created by a madman, programmed for violence and murder. Wasn't violent with Chipper. Chipper was lucky. I tell you, Barry, I know what I'm talking about. Believe me. Why would he be so gentle with a trapped animal? He saved Chipper's life. Why, Mr. Fitzhugh? And Barry, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, not exactly. <laughs> 